and welcome to Girl We Have to Talk podcast. This week we are chatting with my friend Jamie, um, who I met on Bumble BFF, and we're going to be discussing Bumble BFF and oh, honestly lots of other things. I was just actually recording this with her at her house uh, today, and I got to hang out with her super cute dog Maya, and we just talked for like over an hour. So I think it's a pretty good conversation. We talk about Game of Thrones, friendship dating versus romantic dating, the drama, the drama triangle, um, and then we answered some questions from some Reddit followers. So buckle in for a really fun and interesting conversation. The bright side is that she's a psychotherapist, so that means that her advice is probably actually good advice versus the bullshit that I give you guys every other week. Um, once again, just so you remember, please follow me on Instagram at Girl We Have to Talk Podcast. Um, you can email me at Girl We Have to Talk Podcast at gmail.com. Actually, I think it's just girl we have to talk at gmail.com. Sorry about that. Um, and I am your host, Iris, just coming to you with your bi weekly dose of girl chit chat and um, bullshit. I think I say that every week, but uh, I always think when people say, What's your podcast about? I'm like, It's about friendship and being friends and like honestly just the stuff that people talk about when they get together with their girlfriends. And so I hope that this brings a little bit of light to your Monday tunnel as you listen to this. And I hope you come back next week. Don't forget to um, rate, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to leave me a review if you like it. I'd love to know what you guys think if you're out there listening, although I do get, thanks to Anchor, a number of people who are listening, and so I know that there are listeners out there, so if you have the time to rate uh, and review and subscribe, that would be awesome because that means that my podcast will be more visible and more people can listen to it and, you know, hopefully enjoy. So hopefully you enjoy this week's podcast with Jay. Me and hopefully you'll join me again in two weeks. Actually, I have no idea who I will be talking to in two weeks, so it'll be a full-fledged surprise. I think it'll either be um, me and two of my girlfriends who don't live close to me. Um, one of them is Nina, who we've already talked with, and then the other one is AJ, who lives in Dallas, or I'll be talking to my husband. So one or the other, either one should make for a super amazing conversation, and I hope you'll join me for that too. Thanks. Dog. I really think she's reactive to dogs. Okay, so we started the okay. recording. Oh, okay. Yes, don't worry. I'll edit this part out. Or maybe I won't. I might just leave it. <laughs> you'll see what happens. So I'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Okay, guys, welcome to the podcast. Um, I have Jamie here with me today. So Jamie is going to tell us, start off by telling us a little bit about herself and like how we met, and then we'll <laughs> and we'll just go from there. So Jamie, tell us about yourself. Um. Hello. I um, probably one of the most interesting or, or maybe not interesting things about myself is I'm a psychotherapist. Um, oh, and the most interesting thing about this is that this whole podcast is you're my first actual in-person podcast. So that's a fun fact for anybody who's listening. I have not recorded any friendship podcast with anybody in person except for Jamie. So Jamie's the first one that's yeah. in person live. We have in a real friend. Like, and we're really friends <laughs> because she lives close to me so I can come over to record at her house. Oh, uh, yeah. With her dog. <laughs> yes, with my dog who's sitting on my foot right now. Which I think is another fun fact. You have a cute dog. I do. I do. We have, I think we've developed actually a very good friendship. You and the dog? Say. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're very much in sync. We definitely, I don't think you we're like Maya. that at first. We had to adjust to each other, but I think now we're doing pretty good. Okay. So, so your interesting thing is that you're a psychotherapist. Yeah. I'm a psychotherapist. I think that's kind of interesting. I, I have people um, who, you know, have questions about that. Like, yeah. what do I do? Um, which I always think is an interesting question to answer. Usually I just say, like, I talk all the time, <laughs> like most of the session, and then I tell them they're wrong um, and that they're really screwed up or something like that. But Actually, I really like that. No, no, I do. Like, so I was having, so today at book club, uh, Katie, who's also a therapist, was there, and Katie was saying she, uh, we were talking about, like, whose jobs we could do, and I was like, basically, I couldn't do anybody's job who was at the table. <laughs> but also, like, that said, nobody could do my job either. If they think yeah. they could do it, they would be dead fucking I wrong. Would, no, nobody would want to do job. HR. No. Um, so it's, <laughs> like, it's like being a therapist, but it's worse. Um, like, I, I really do think so. It's, like, like being a therapist, only it's worse, because I'm just, like, I, because the thing is, I don't actually, and this is going to sound really mean, I don't actually care about you. Like, I actually legally can't because, unfortunately, human resources were there for the company, not for you. So yeah. if you come in there to talk to me, even if I'm trying to give you advice, like, more so, more likely I'm just like, 
trying to make it so that you don't become a liability to the organization whereas in your work you're actually there to help but Katie was saying she doesn't actually give advice in her therapy session she just listens right, and so you're right. saying for you you do give it you you give advice well I'm joking I don't oh, really you don't talk give the advice? whole time and and tell them that they're screwed up but no. do you give advice um I would say I like may give suggestions okay um I always make it very clear though that it's up to them um that it's their choice and I usually ask a lot of times when they say what do you think or what would you do I I say well what do you what do you think and mm-hmm. I have some clients who are like, I knew you were going to ask me that, and they get annoyed. Um, but it depends on the client, like, and it depends on the situation. Like, sometimes we're kind of joking around, yeah. and so with that situation, or, like, sometimes we're, like, doing pseudotherapy, like, we're talking about travel, and I happen to know a lot about travel, oh, yeah. so I might give, like, a suggestion there. Oh, that's fine. Um, that's, like, a, like, that's... Right, right. So, um, but it really, it depends on the situation and the client, um, and, uh, and also the therapeutic relationship, yeah. honestly. I had a therapist who I really liked. I She's not my therapist anymore because I haven't seen her in, like, a year. Um, but I really liked her a lot, and she would always give me advice. I think that I'm the type of client, though, who, like, I need advice. Like, I, she would give me, like, she, she would give me homework assignments. She'd be, like, I was having problems with one of the girl who, like, this podcast, I've been talking about her periodically, the one that we're not friends, that, I'm, that we're not, none of us are friends with her anymore. That's actually not true. I was just talking to Heidi, and Heidi was saying that she was talking to her, and I was like, oh, God, she will just not get the fuck out of my life. She's just everywhere. She's everywhere. She's friends with all of my friends. But I was talking to my therapist about that, and she gave me, like, some homework to be like, you should try to do these things to improve Mm. your relationship. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I didn't do those things. I was just like, (laughs) no, fuck that. I don't want to be friends with her anymore. I'm not going to do your homework. So, yeah, I I would love, like, I want a therapist who will give me advice. I think I need some direction. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, in some ways, it's really not advice because advice is, like, like, it's not how I would talk to a friend, because mm. I would say, like, well, this is what I would do, but when I'm, if I'm talking to a client, I'm thinking about, based on what I know about them and our therapeutic huh. relate. like, I might say some new client, like, just knowing you, I have a feeling if you do this, then you'll always wonder why you didn't make the other option. That's or, fair. Or exce- you know? I feel like that's useful. Yeah, so that, it's not exactly advice, I guess, in that way. But it's way. insight. Yeah, yeah, just based on, on knowing them. Um, and I feel like I was going to say something else, but I can't remember what it was. If you think of it, you can jump in later. Yeah, I will. Um, so Jamie and I met on Bumble BFF, which I think is great. Is that okay that I say that we met on Bumble? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So, because that kind of segues back to therapy, so funny shit happened to me. I didn't tell you about this, so that I can tell you about this right now. Oh, great. So, I have, like... I was telling one of my best friends, so I have a best friend for 20 years, we're really close, Uh Um, like we're really close like family members in that, Uh like I don't even consider her a friend anymore. Okay. Um, Like she's she's like probably not somebody who I'd be friends with that I made right now because she's so like, she's flaky. Oh, you told me about her. She's like hard to get in touch with. Anyway, she- Yes, you have told me about her. She was messaging me and she's like getting on Bumble BFF and I was like, how are you getting on fucking Bumble BFF and like we've been friends for 20 years and every time I try to make plans with you, you are not available. She's like- she's she's local. Yeah, she lives Uh, fucking in Bronzeville. Oh. I know, I hope she listens to this. Like, um, (laughs) you're an asshole for not ever hanging out with me and we work like two blocks from each other. She's probably like- she probably has so many friends in Bronzeville. She's not talking about me. <laughs> no, I'm talking about you. Um, it's you. We were if just, you think I'm talking you about you, it's, you, it's, it's you. you. We were just talking yesterday about how she's going to get on Bumble BFF. And I was like, why? Like, like, why are you getting on Bumble BFF? And I'm always trying to hang out with you. <laughs> and you're always Did you busy. seriously tell her that? Yeah. That's so great. Oh, I love thank that. You. I mean, yeah, it's I very direct. Really, I, I am really direct. Yeah. Like, I think I'm really direct with her because we have a comfort level. Uh-huh. That goes back to my little Enneagram number, number six. I think that like I am like I really identify with that the loyalist like I really think that I trust her enough I'm, I trust our friendship enough to know that if I said that to her like she she actually laughed she was like I knew you were gonna say that to me she's like I knew you're gonna say that and I was like yeah I'm not kidding um and then we talked about like what the Bumble BFF friendship thing is like and I was like yeah the difficulty is that I was like I have I, I have too many friends now which is not true you can never have too many friends but I think I'm so busy that I like yeah. to see you guys all together. Like, it's harder to make time. And then if you sure. don't have the time, you can't have good friendships. So anyway, she was talking about this. And this is the funny story. So I was like, oh, let me go look at your Bumble BFF profile. So I don't have my profile anymore. So I had to go and just, like, log on. So it okay. wasn't a big deal. So I mm-hmm. logged on. This was, like, 
last week on Thursday. Yeah. And I was swiping through so I could find her, and I found my therapist on Bumble BFF. Oh, yeah. I was, like, wondering to myself, I was like, wow, she looks so fun. Like, I'd love to be friends with her. And I was like, I can't swipe on her, though, because she used to be my therapist. But I was like, good for her for being on Bumble BFF. It's there for are everyone. There are therapists on Bumble BFF. Well, I met because, you there and yeah. Katie there. Because yeah, I'm sure it's so lonely, isolated. right? And yeah. the other two people I met both therapists both therapists oh my god so it's like you guys should have like a therapist gang like a gang of therapist friendships yeah I mean I think I kind of do like a lot of my friends I think I've gotten through meeting them through being a therapist yeah yeah it's just like a relational work and yet you can be really isolated so yeah you are interacting with people all day only to probably you can't really be friends with your patients is are they considered patients or clients I call them clients I think most um Therapists, therapists do. do yeah but no you can't yeah I mean I, I, I can only speak for myself I feel like it would be um, hard to do that yeah because even like after you end the relationship then like you can't if you become one their friend then you can't really see them ever again exactly so, and also like it's it's a different dynamic right so like I you know I do self-disclose in session but I do think about that because like I'm revealing another part of myself right so it's always about them if I'm self-disclosing it's for their benefit um based on what we're talking about but it's just like like for example I tried to be friends with a yoga teacher and it was weird like when Wait, we hung somebody out who was doing who was teaching you yeah yoga. yeah and I like I, w- I just thought she was super cool yeah. and so we hung out once I want I was asking her because at the time I was doing teacher yoga teacher training and I was curious and she just was it was just a totally weird different dynamic and it wasn't what it I thought work. it was gonna be no it did not work I was like oh never so, again sorry we can't be friends yeah Goodbye and then now. I hardly went to her yoga classes anymore because you felt it was so awkward yeah I don't know I've never tried to be friends with anybody that I met in public before. Well, just a power dynamic, right? Of a therapist and a client and yeah. a yoga teacher and a And then also, student. like, I feel like it would be so hard to get out of the, the rhythm of, like, you being my therapist. Because I would expect, I would feel like I'd probably put too much pressure on you. Right, like, right. And it's also, like, if you think about it, like, one of the beautiful things about my job is that I see people in a way that no one else sees them. So, there are definitely clients who I've thought, like, I don't know that I would like you if I didn't see you in this way. Seriously. And so you wouldn't know. now, like, now this, you know, the client is like, oh, you know me in this way. Like, it's very vulnerable. Totally. So it's hard. I think that's another reason why it would be hard to make work. that shift, even if it was, like, possible to do. I did not swipe on my therapist. I was like, no. Also, I'm not on the site right now. So I was like, no. But also, I was like, that would be so awkward. Yeah, but that, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I know. I, I had like, a friend who's a therapist who had a client who actually was on said a dating. Yes. It was on a, a dating app. Because I, I definitely I wondered wouldn't do about that. that, too. Yeah, of course. I definitely wouldn't swipe on my therapist. Well, for it, I, don't think the, I don't think the client did, but okay, then they good. talked about it in session. Got it. Which was really healthy. Good. Yeah. Okay, so. Jamie and I met on Bumble BFF, and how do you feel like relationship, romantic dating versus friendship dating? Do you feel like there's a big difference? I mean, I, yeah, I, well, you know, because you're, you're dating online right yeah, now. Yeah. And you're not friendship dating anymore. No, and honestly, like, I have friendship dated before, but not through Bumble BFF. Same. This is my first experience. It was and so, it was, like, so easy. Like, Listen, I, I talked to a bunch of people, yeah. but I met you and, like, two other people that, Actually, the other one of the other people I was hanging that's who I hung out with earlier today that we that's went awesome. to the horse farm. So, um, like, yeah, those went so smoothly. I wish online dating was like that. Was it easy peasy? Yeah, I mean, when I did um, um, friendship dating before, it was through Craigslist, and like, I think this other like weird um, friendship website that didn't work very well. And I was it like girlfriend really- social? I think it might have been. Oh my and gosh. Have you? Uh, yes, Jamie. I don't know how we haven't been friends for like 10 years. Well, I, well and the book club. And the book club. Like, Jamie and I met virtually <laughs> like 10 years ago because I had a book club and I was looking for people to join the book club on Craigslist. And you emailed me and were like, hey, I would be interested in this book club. And then you never got back to yeah, me. Yeah. I know. I rejected you. I'm so you sorry. You did. You ghosted me. You I were ghosted. like, because you were totally like, well, when is it? Where is it? What are you guys reading? And then you like literally never got back to me. Yeah, I was in I was in a very transitional place at that time. So That's okay. That had nothing I to do with. I don't the book think club. I even thought about it. I was just like, because I think a lot of people are like that. I was yeah. telling Anaja 
um, who's my friend that is like flaky that I've been friends with for 20 years. <laughs> she, um, I was telling her, I was like, Oh, well, now you said her name. Yes, so now that, you know it's you. A Naja. Yes, exactly. And there's nobody else who has that name. So she's going to 100% know. Um, she was like, Oh, and then that's so funny because I was telling her about the podcast and she's like, Why haven't I been at the podcast? I was like, Because I don't ever talk to you, you <laughs> psycho. Like, she's like, I'm like, Yeah. So anyway, I was telling her that I was like, the weird thing about girlfriends that friendship date, like friendship dating online, which I'm happy they created Bumble BFF. Yeah. And like they're making it. Because I think I wish obviously they had more. that's more, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. People need, girls, women need yes, that. Yes, for um, sure. But I think that the, what happens is women get on there when they break up. I've noticed that. Mm. Like I've gotten a lot of like people who are like, going through a breakup and they get on which is fine but then as soon as they get into a new relationship they totally disappear yeah and so that kind of sucks I think that it's hard to find like friendships that like stick through that site because it's hard to you have to do so much work sure. to we, maintain them you know what it's funny because when I was starting this I I I am I was single I still am single right now and I was like trying to look for not just single people but I did want some because I really feel like it's really good to have people that are like you yeah. that you're friends with, right? But it's so funny because all the three people that I'm friends with are two of them are married and one of them is in like a long term relationship. Now it was still new, but they're still still together. together. And it's funny because we talked about this. You said like ah, some single people if they like want to go out, and it's like yeah, I don't, that's not where I am either. Like right. I'm not gonna go be someone's wing woman. I just am not. I mean. Maybe if it's like a really chill place. Yes. Um, like one of the friends I met on Bumble BFF, like we went for a wine night and we had like two glasses of wine. It was chill. It was fine, you know. But I'm not gonna I like go that. out to some like club. Rager. Like yeah, I'm not going to a rager like to 4 a.m. Well, like on the whole nine yard type of thing. I I'm feel not like there's that. like one per like it would have <laughs> to be super particular. Basically, the only way that I'm going out until four o'clock in the morning. Is I'm also just, I feel like I have these, you probably know about this as a therapist, because I don't do that anymore, I can't just go and do it. It has to be, like, with a very particular group of people, and it just so <laughs> happens that they don't live here anymore. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, so the person who I used to go out and party all the time with was my friend AJ, who doesn't mm -hmm. live here anymore, she lives in Dallas. So, but she's supposed to be coming here. So now that she's coming here over the summer, I'm like, oh, we should go out until four o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm like, because I only, because it's like just something that I only have done. Like I usually, we did it so much together that I'm like, that would be fun, but only like with you. Because if somebody else invited me, like if anyone else was like, do you want to go out until four o'clock in the morning? I'd be like, absolutely fucking <laughs> not. I don't want to go out with you until four o'clock in the morning. But when she's here, she's like, she's supposed to be coming here in August. I'm like, yeah, we should definitely go out. We should go out. We should like rent a limo we should get a babysitter for your baby <laughs> i'm like flinging her baby away with my hand nice. like i'm just throwing him away he's super cute though uh -huh. i like he seems cute well yeah but it's not he can't go to the 4 a.m bar yeah not yet yeah <laughs> so but i'm like we should get a babysitter for your baby <laughs> and then we should go out but that's literally just because of her i well, can't think you about probably going know out. that the, it, it's gonna be a fun time and that's then it's true. gonna be like a safe it's time. gonna be safe and fun yeah also like i feel like we hung out and partied so much together and she's married, but even if she wasn't, like, if she, if she were to get, like, really crazy and, like, be completely fucking nuts at 3 o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't feel bad being like, okay, well, listen, you're being really nuts and I'm going to leave you. And, like, mm. you, should, you should leave too. That's a really yeah. important thing, though, because, like, I have definitely struggled with that with friends who like to go out because I really just, like, I hit a limit. Like, I, I was the girl, I was the person in college who would, like, fall asleep at the bar yes. because I felt like I couldn't leave, and everybody was still, like... You didn't do the Irish goodbye? No, I've done Irish goodbyes, but not at that point in my life. I have done that, like, later in my life. I yeah. you've, you've grown into the Irish goodbye? Right, I'm right. Sleeping. No, I have. I have, because I think I've grown more into accepting who I am, and, like, it's okay if I don't want to be out that late. Like, yeah. I'm just, like, an early to bed, early to rise type of person. So, um, so yeah, no, I totally think that is an, an important thing. Um, if they have this idea that you have to leave together, I mean... It, it's sometimes safety. it's a safety thing, yeah. so I get that. But, yeah, I mean, that is that is nice. But, um, you know, I think the other thing I was going to say, too, about what you said about, like, well, you know, if you have someone who's single and then they find someone and then you're not friends with them, I think part of the issue is, because, like, this is something that comes up in therapy that I'm doing with clients is, like, friendship stuff. Yeah. 
And I think that, like, honestly, most friendships are meant, or in most relationships, right? Like, not just even friendships, but, like, um, some, like, intimate relationships that we have, some family relationships that we have, because we put so much pressure on family when really, like, they're not that much different than anybody oh, yeah. else on the street other than, like, we share some blood. Right. Um, but... I think many relationships are meant to not last forever. They're yeah. meant to last for a certain amount of time or a certain season. Um, but I think that we have such loss because we have this, there's this myth that there's, mm -hmm. oh, once we're friends, we're friends forever. Right. It's like, well, no, not always. Like yeah. we so grow and we change and things happen. And um, it's, it's, I don't think a lot of times it happens on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we don't, I don't think we get into a friendship and are like, all right, so it's over. we're going to be friends for three years and then I'm just going to ghost this person out of nowhere, yeah. right? Like, it's just, that's what I do. I'm just going <laughs> to, I always just start all the right, time All right, so I, I should really go back to when we first met and just like put start three counting years. it out. No, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I agree with you. I think some friendships are not meant to last forever, but it does suck when they end. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the loss is still very, yeah. Great. And I think it, for me, like, with the friendship breakup, the only one that I've had recently is just that one that I've been kind of speaking about the girl who I lived with it's difficult because for me I don't mind if we're not friends anymore it just sucks that I have to it I feel almost like I'm in like joint custody with my other friends I think that's probably the most hurtful part mm, yeah and also it became such a dis like I don't know why but it became such a like volatile breakup friendship breakup and, and I feel ex like I'm exaggerating from saying that because nothing actually happened it was like a silent eruption, I guess. Is it was like a fucking aneurysm friendship. Like, it was like, you don't know what's happening, and then it blew up, and then it was over, and, like, it was dead. Mm -hmm. But what's weird is, like, it didn't feel like anything has happened, and I kind of had a lot of friendship breakups where it was like, we got into an argument, and we were like, fuck it, we're not talking anymore, and it was just, like, very clear. But this one, it was, like, kind of like, oh, we're just going to, like, stop talking. But, like, I don't think that I even know, like, I know clearly why I'm pissed off at her. I'm not even pissed off. I know why I stopped talking to her. I don't know why she stopped talking to me. I'm not really sure exactly where she's coming from. But usually when that happens, it's like, okay, great. And now that's it. We're done. But for her, like, I have, like, my other friend who's still friends with her. And they're, like, becoming closer and closer. And I think me and this friend are close. But I definitely feel that I'm not – I don't try to be as close to this girl because I know she's friends with her. Yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. And I think that's, like, one of the differences, too, between, like – um, friendship dating and um, like relationship romantic, yeah. yeah romantic dating is like because I think it's you kind of even though it's hard I think you do expect like yeah, yeah. I might get ghosted like this might not might work break out up. yeah but I think with friendship on you know dating it's like you don't expect that as right. much so in some ways I think that does then the loss like hits you in a different way yes and I think we're all more like we're emotionally conditioned to be accepting that somebody could be hurt from a romantic breakup and we're not really accepting of the fact that like maybe you would be hurt by a friendship breakup right and so like right. if you That's had true. Mu yeah. mutual friends or whatever if like if I was friends with your ex and I would feel like oh man it would be weird if I kept talking to Jamie about right. this person right that's true like, we don't think about we don't that think about that and then if yeah. the person like I know for me when I've like said like oh it kind of bothers me people kind of blow it over they're like well you know friendships aren't meant to last forever and sometimes things end yeah. but I know that if I was in like if it was like my boyfriend of three years that we lived together right. and we broke right. up they would be like oh my gosh I'm so sorry but it's like we're so conditioned to take things so differently yeah. that's why when I have friends, when I'm friends with people and they're like, me and this friend stop talking, I know how I always feel, so I always try to be conscious of that, and I take it really seriously. I'm like, oh my god, are you okay? And like, what happened? Do you feel like it can be corrected? Just because I think a breakup is a breakup. So it just, you know, it yeah. hurts no matter what, and I think that we're, oh, I think you're allowed to have your feelings about breaking up with your boyfriend, but when you say, like, it really hurts that I'm not friends with this person where maybe that relationship might have been even more intimate than your friendship would have been with a three-year boyfriend. You might have had more intimacy, probably, like, not sexual. Right, <laughs> I mean, right. But, like, a lot more closeness with right, this person. Right, And for that to just be gone, people just take it really lightly. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Sometimes they don't have to last. But I do think that as humans, we can be more sensitive to people when th they have a relationship end. Um Absolutely. I totally agree with that because I think you're right. It isn't really validated. Yeah. And 
like, I don't know. I think I would... I think you do a good job of validating, because I remember when we first met, I was telling you about it, and you were like, wow, that must be really hard. And that was, like, the first time that anybody had said, like, oh, well, that sucks. Like, that really sucks that that happened. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to validate it again, because I just feel like it's... Yeah, if, if it's hard in, in your situation to, like, have a friend who's like, okay, I was really hurt by this other friend, but you're still friend Like, I don't know. That, of course that I they think, is a really still, hard situation. And, of course, they should all still be friends, but it just should be, like, I think that we just... Yeah, but not even to be talked about. Like, yeah, it seems I think we like it's, like, the elephant in the room. Oh, my that, God. Like, no I feel like every time I'm with somebody, because, but you know what it is, it's, like, every time I'm with somebody where we both know her, they always bring her up, but I think it's because, like... I know who they're talking about so like it and they don't know I mean they know that we're not friends but like they just it's just like oh like but it's so again it's such like not a big deal like people are like it's it's just so not a big like, well oh, you, maybe you don't make it a big deal I don't like yeah. I won't ever be like hey listen like like I don't really because the truth of the matter is is like I don't want to be friends with her I think we t- I talked about this to Jen last week I don't want to be friends with her, but it still sucks that we're not friends. Yeah. Well, I wonder about even just, like, boys saying that. Because I think that I, I should. You're I, right. You, because you, I, yeah, because I'm hearing, like, it is kind of, like, it is kind of awkward. It so is. So maybe just to say, like, yeah, this is kind of, like, a little bit awkward. Yeah. Or, like, yeah, it does kind of bother me that things happen this right. way. I think that, like, you, what you were saying today was super interesting. We were talking about your ex. And how one of the things that is really difficult for you when you guys were together is the fact that he seems to apparently need absolutely nothing. Yeah. And I think that, like, that's my fault, too. Sometimes I can come off as very, like, oh, I don't need anything, but, like, how can I help you? And, like, I want to help you all the time, yes. but, like, yes. you don't need to that's do anything That's the loyalist, for me. isn't it? I think, yes, it's the personality, <laughs> so you're right. I need to, like, work on just being more vulnerable. Because even my mom's, like, yeah. my mom's, like, you don't let me do anything for you. Like, I don't let people do anything for me. Yeah. Like, it's and really that's hard tough. to be on the receiving end of that. Yeah. It's uh, right. To be in a, and I think you know, is, in a relationship right. with someone like that. I think and it's really hard for my mom. Because then, yeah, then it kind of it kind of looks me. like, oh, well, why do I have needs then? Right. Like, I should not have any needs either. And that's, it's, it's yeah. hard. And I think for my mom, it makes her feel really bad. because, And I think for my husband, it makes him feel bad sometimes, too. Because he definitely needs things and I think I'm really there for him and so even sometimes like I know that he was really working to pay off a lot of his credit card debt so I always volunteer to pay for everything but I've noticed that he's like listen I can pay like I think it's like I'm so overcome like I always want to help people so much I'm just like oh my gosh let me do this let me do so then I don't let anybody do anything else and I think it makes them feel like worthless like I feel like maybe that's a harsh word worthless but just like they can't do anything or like they don't you like, you don't need them for anything. And I think people like to feel like the, it's a reciprocal relationship. Right. So We like to be needed. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to that. I mean, um, I know we talked about maybe talking about this at some point, but the drama triangle yes. where you're We can talk about it now. Rescuer. Go ahead and talk about the... Yeah. Uh, so, just so everybody listening to the podcast knows, I'm a number six. I'm a loyalist. And also, um, I'm a rescuer in the drama triangle. <laughs> so, so, that's Enneagram, number yeah. six... Uh, yeah, and Enneagram, I'm a number six loyalist, loyalist, which I have passed this test along. I even gave it to people at work, Jamie. Oh, did you? Yeah, so it's like, take this I test. I still feel like I'm a number one, the reformer. And now I, believe you. I feel like I have so many clients where I'm asking them because I feel like they're reformers too. <laughs> I think you're a reformer too. Like, I totally agreed with you because when you were saying you were a number, like, the three, I was like, yeah, nah, no. I don't really think that that's you. Like, I was reading and I was like, that doesn't seem like Jamie. No, yeah, I think I'm a one. I think a lot of people get the three thrown in because we all have, like, a little bit of, like, the achieve. I think it's the achiever. Is yeah. that what they are? I think, I think everybody so, yeah. who's driven has the achiever in them. Like, even for me, it was on, I think it was my second choice. It was, like, you're either a loyalist or you're an achiever. And I'm, mm-hmm. like, I yeah, am. you had, like, a wing. Yeah, wing I, right. Three. My wing was a three. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, yeah, like, I am. But that's just because, like, I want to be successful. <laughs> I think that, like, every person who is like a millennial which like because you are too yeah. I think we I think most of us would probably get that because even the ones who like live at home whatever we're all very like entrepreneurial in spirit we all want to like achieve and get things that's why we've all gone to school right. for so long right. we want to yeah be are we like the generation of the side hustle or is yes. that like the no no that's true we are okay. well fuck yeah like fuck all those people <laughs> who say that we're not like excuse you they're like millennials suck I'm like well you're welcome for Grubhub and Uber and Lyft so go fuck yourself yeah. and well, all Instacart I was <laughs> talking to someone who was in an older generation who was talking about you guys are not loyal you don't work hard and I said you know what I said you have to realize though that the work um, that 
that the work culture is totally different and that companies aren't as loyal as they used right. to be. Right, exactly. Like, so you're that's not rewarding people for staying it. for a long time. Right. And then also another thing is, especially for older millennials, which I'm, I'm like an older millennial, and I'm sure you are too. Basically, it's anybody who was born before 1990 but is still a millennial. Okay, we so were older- wait, when does millennial go to then? I don't because I thought Generation Z are like people in their twenties now, right? They are, but oh, I guess because you, you're third. Okay. Yes, but it's basically um, so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I'm considered an older millennial. I mm-hmm. think they, so. My coworker is like the youngest millennial, and she's 24. Oh, okay. okay. Um. So, but we're very different, and we look at things super differently too. But I read about it. Actually, shared an article from Forbes that came out. Not that they know everything, but I thought it was an interesting article. Um, about how people that are older millennials, we graduated during the recession and we were old enough to remember mm, 9-11. Yes. So our yes. brains are just different. So no, I'm not loyal to a company. I saw the recession. Like, why would I? I saw how you were laying people off. I saw, like, everybody lose all their money in the 401k. Like, yeah, I got compounded yeah. with student loan debt because there were no jobs for me when I graduated. Right. Um, so no, I'm not trying to stay at your fucking company for 30 years so that you can be like, well, I'm just kidding. I, I, I spent it all on a CEO bonus. Why would I do that? Like we all saw that. So we're old enough to be like, no, thank you. No, it's so true because like, I think our parents generations, like all, a lot of them have pensions right. and I don't think that people really understand like that's a big reason not having that and, and having the benefits totally shift is a big and and also student loan debt is a huge reason why most people are not on track to buy a home buy a home or to retire yeah like exactly have, to have any plan for retirement yes a hundred percent and on top of it it's just none of us want to they also when you stay at a company i was at a company for three years they hired on one of my really close friends um who nina nina was on the show and oh, yeah. mm-hmm. she got hired on, and then they basically made me train her, which I was happy to do. But I asked, I was and like, you didn't get paid for it. Did no, you? I didn't get yeah. paid for it. And I asked, I was like, can I have like any kind of a leadership opportunity? Because at this point, I felt like I was leading the team. Like I was doing more work than everybody there, even my supervisor. And Nina listens to this podcast. She would a hundred percent agree, and it's happening to her now, oh. um, because she's the one who's the workhorse on the team. Mm-hmm. But basically, I asked for that, and they were like, no, sorry, we don't have anything for you. So I left, and I went to another company I was there only for a year and um I got a twenty thousand dollar raise just for like leaving and going to another company now granted it was a, a like it was a horrible change like the company that I worked at last year was really fucked up did not enjoy it learned a lot bad experience and then now I'm at my job now which is better um but even <laughs> from there I know I'm like it's better I guess it's like I don't have to manage anyone so automatically oh, that's good yes and I have my own office so we'll just say it's uh. a win Exactly. I can close my door if it gets too shitty. Um, but so between so I left my job that Nina works at just like a year and a half ago. And in the year and a half since I left that company, after working there for three years, I have received I have increased my salary by thirty thousand dollars. That would have never happened if I stayed there. Now it's not always about money, but the thing is you lose people by not rewarding. Like if I'm capable of doing what I'm doing at another company and making more money, I didn't even ask them for a raise. I just wanted to have a title that was appropriate to me, and they weren't willing to do it. So that's why millennials aren't loyal, because there's no reward, really, for staying. You don't do anything for us. No, it's true. I've heard that a lot, that you actually are going to, you know, have more benefit by going somewhere else than by staying. And that also, I think, goes to how many more jobs millennials have, like, in their lifetime Mm -hmm. than generations previous. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, I would love to end up at a job where I can be there. Like, for me, long term, is like, I would love to be someplace for five years. That would be so great. But, I mean, it really has to be the right fit. And I think the, another thing about millennials is we are not afraid to, to make the change. Like, right. It's we scary. advocate for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you, you have to ask. Otherwise, you're just going to be working the same job, plugging along. And I swear, if I, most of those people that are at my company that I left a year and a half ago, most of them have been there for 20 years. Like, the person who was my supervisor, she was there for 22 years, and she only got promoted to being my supervisor a year after I was there. So she had been in her role for 20 years, doing the same job for 20 years, 
without ever getting a promotion. And then mm-hmm. she told me when I left, because I told her the whole situation, and I was like, listen, I don't mm-hmm. want to leave. I don't even need more money. I just want a title or some kind of a training to move towards the next position. Because I had just finished a master's degree, and I was like, I don't want to be doing the same job forever. Right, right. Uh, for 20 years, no offense to her. I just don't <laughs> see myself doing that. And they were like, yeah, we just don't have anything. And then when I was telling her, like, I was like, well, I'm going to go to... Um, I worked at the Y, so that was the job that I had before. I was like, I'm going to go to the Y, and I'm going to be basically, I had her job at the Y, so I was a talent Mm -hmm. acquisition manager. And I was like, and I'm going to be making, I told her what I was going to be making. She's like, that's what I'm making now, after 20 years of being there. Wow. So I was just like, yeah, it was a good move to leave. Um, But that's why, I guess that's why they can say millennials aren't loyal. But, I mean, if if it means that you're not loyal because you care about your well-being, then I guess so (laughs) be it. We all have to, like, I'm not... I don't want to get fucked over. I think it's over. just a different culture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we were supposed to talk about is Game of Thrones. Okay. So by the time this comes oh, out. Oh, wait. Think... Wait. We didn't talk. Wait, we what didn't did we explain miss? the drama triangle. Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry. Jamie is going to explain the drama triangle. Okay. And then I'll we're going to talk quickly. about Game of Thrones. I'll do this But you quickly. can tell us who you think everybody is in the drama triangle. Explain the drama triangle and then oh, talk. Whoa. And then think about your characters <laughs> oh from Game of Thrones that would fit into the drama triangle. Oh, well. Yeah, actually. Oh, is that a good very, segue? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's a very good segue. Okay. So, um, so quickly, the drama triangle is an upside down triangle um, to represent two different people in the relationship. So, the upside, the top part of the triangle is actually the bottom is one person, but they tend to go between two roles. They tend to have one primary, but then move to the other one. Okay. So, those two are rescuer. And then perpetrator and or persecutor are like the two different names. And then the person at the bottom, um, it, at, which is actually the top, but because it's, it's reverse, is a victim. And so the idea is, is that the person at the top is either usually like being abusive to the victim um, or they're rescuing them all the time. And this is an unhealthy relationship. And the way to change that is to flatten it, make it two adults, so it's a line with two A's on each side. Oh, okay. And usually the way I explain it to clients, because I talk to client, a lot of clients about the drama triangle, is like the way you flatten the triangle is boundaries. Okay. And anybody can do that. Like a victim can actually say like, you know, I think I'm actually not being responsible for things here. I feel like I'm letting you do more and I really don't feel good about that. Right. Or I really need to start making my own decisions or... Whatever. Whatever. Now, of course, what's different is, as I mentioned, like there's an, um, the perpetrator persecutor could be someone who's abusive in a truly abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that the power control dynamic is different. And so we can't put as much responsibility on that victim as we should that abuser. Right. That's good. I'm always in a drama triangle. Well, we all are. Yeah, we okay, all are good. to a certain like, extent like in that. at least some of our relationships, yes. right? I feel and like my marriage, though, is good right now. I don't great. think I'm in a drama triangle at the moment. That's great. I'll let you know if it changes. I'll keep <laughs> I mean, the, the, the other form. thing is is that we uh, relationships aren't always 50-50, but if we find ourselves in this um, triangle for, like, long term, uh-huh. that's when we want to look at it. Um, but... So the first person I thought of was Jon Snow, and he's a total rescuer. Yes, he is. Poor guy. He's a total rescuer, right? <laughs> yes. And and this is what's and I my think problem he's, like, so with the last season. Of it. It's just like... Yeah. Well, I actually I don't know. Oh no. I think I was really resentful in that last episode because oh. I was like, why is this guy not getting his fucking due? Like, no one is is he's trying to do everything the right way just yep. like his dad but of course that was the foreshadowing with his dad was that he was doing everything right and then he got killed yeah mad. so i don't know if they're like i think a lot of this was about like you can't escape run, uh, escape your past okay. or like your family lineage like danny oh. who went crazy and everything so oh that's really interesting i didn't yeah. even think about that i've talked like it's so funny but i've talked to many clients about game of thrones so i think i got that from a You're client like, i feel like i have the whole yeah figured out um but anyway so um so yeah he's definitely a rescuer um and I think like he I that was my whole issue with the last episode but then by the end I think actually where he ended up with the wildlings was where he was most like himself yeah and then I had these thoughts of like I'm so invested in this character that I want different things for him than even he wants 
that's I think that's literally what everybody wants. That's how Mike was. Like I was actually like, no, like I think it's fine that he ended up did we talk about this? That I thought it was fine that he ended up with the wildlings because he really like identified with those people, the girl yeah. that he loved. Yeah. I like, think most people did. It's just like how he But you like, wanted got him to shit be yeah, for like, the but whole I'm like thing. you really fucking rounded this shit up. Like right. you deserve more. Right. But I think we have probably lots of people in our lives like that where and I'm guilty of that. Like as a friend, like I'm always the one that's like, No, fuck that. Like you don't need to do whatever, whatever. Like you deserve to get more because you're so amazing and so and the person's like, But Iris, like I I, I want to marry this guy or mm-hmm. I want to work at this job or you know I like this apartment like but I'm always trying to push them to do something else mm-hmm. so I that's that's how I think everybody has been for Jon Snow they want him to be the king mm-hmm. but he, yeah. he doesn't yeah, want he to doesn't be want, right, no right. he just wants to live in the wild right and then a perfect victim is Cersei I hate her Jesus, am she's I the a... only person who hates her does that mean that I hate victims <laughs> no, no. I mean, she is a hard person to like. And you could see her as a perpetrator oh, person. No, 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 I'm sorry. I take it back. Cersei is... Cer- okay, because guys, just so you know, I'm not a long-term Game of Thrones person. I only Are you getting confused? Yes. Because you could hate Cersei. I, no, no. I don't hate Cersei, though, which okay. I think is the reason... I don't hate Cersei because I think I'm kind of dark-sided. Cersei's oh. the bitch mom. She's the one who ends up queen at the end. Until she gets... Oh, wait, no, until she I dies. thought that was Sansa. No, Sansa is the one who ends up as the Queen of the North. Okay, yes, I hate her. I oh, hate Sansa. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate her. I think she's so annoying. Like, even to the point where I watched her in X Men this weekend and I was like, I fucking hate you. Like, just. Oh, wait, X Men is already out? It was really good. I won't spoil it for uh, you, but we saw it last night. I feel it was like good. they made that movie just so she could be in it. Yeah, she looks like the same. She's got, like, the red hair and everything. Um. <laughs> And she's kind of like Sansa, where I'm just uh, like, God, you're fucking annoying. Jesus Christ. Like, she whatever. was really abused, though. Fine, I mean, fine. She was, like, severely fine. raped. She was, yes, yes, I get it. But, I mean, it was like, <laughs> I'm just like, I just don't like her. Like, I just, she, like, when she became queen, I was like, oh, God, I, like, can't stand her at all. I don't like her. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. I don't know where she would be. I mean, obviously, like, she was a victim at some point. But that's, like, a true victim, like, abuser relationship. Because yeah. sometimes with a perpetrator persecutor can just be someone um, who, like, I don't know, can be mean, can be controlling. I mean, that's, I guess that's emotionally abusive. Yeah. Um, so I don't know then. I just hated her. I can't. Yeah. I need to take, um, I, I probably am such a bad person because I really didn't like her character. Like, I... It's I, okay. You're like, I felt bad for her with the whole, uh-huh. like, when she was with, um, what, what's his name, Ramsey? Yeah. Like, I felt, of course, if You like, didn't terrible. like her, though, before that, right? Because she was like kind of like a that. bratty kid. Yeah, and then also, right? I didn't like her afterwards, either, because, like, the fact that she believed, um, what's the tall, skinny dude, like, after she, he saw, she saw him push her aunt. Oh, she didn't. She just needed somebody to trust. I don't know, I know that she really believed him. The guy who had the really raspy yes, voice. Yes, him. I can't remember what his name is. John, oh, John Wick? No, sorry. Wrong movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea, but I just remember he had a raspy voice yeah. and he was in The Wire. He had, like, also. a needle dick or, like, he had a weird <laughs> name. It was, like, a weird name. Yes, no, it was like that, but it was not it was, that. It but I know what you mean. But, like, him. Like, but it was kind of worth it for Arya to, like, kill. I love oh, Arya. Oh, Spoilers. Oh, that's fine. I'll put a little thing in there. Since there's spoilers for Game of Thrones, if you somehow have not managed to watch um, the end of Game of Thrones but at yeah, this point. But yeah, Cersei, though, she is a perfect, like, she, you could see her as a perpetrator persecutor, but she, I see her as a victim because she's not accountable for her behavior. Oh, yeah. And she feels like she deserves um, everything to be royalty. Yes. That, that's just something she just deserves. She doesn't have to work for it. She doesn't have to do anything. It's just something that she deserves. So I, really, I, I'm, I think that that makes me so like probably a terrible person because I really liked Cersei I was like disappointed in how she died like obviously there were certain points where I was like oh my god you are the worst type of bitch but I mean she was a strong female yes. so I think you know that's and, like, when one she thing was gonna that go women really people. like about yeah. female girls is there's a strong a lot of strong female characters so. and I never liked Danny, so ever the whole entire show yeah and Danny, I feel like, like she's been She's all over the place in the drama. She just triangle. like worked her way around. Yeah, because I you could say she started as a victim. Yes. 
Um, I think there are times when she has been a rescuer, but she's felt, like, entitled in some ways. I think it, like, grew and on And then her. she ended up becoming, like, yeah, this persecutor perpetrator. Like, I it just, just didn't like her. I mean, I, I, I liked, honestly, her ending because I think we really have to remember that any kind of that much power is, is going to go to somebody's head. Yes. Like, it's, it's really hard. And that's yeah, probably that's why point. John didn't want... He that knew. title. It's like it's like my whole thing with president. Mm-hmm. Like I really want um, Michelle Obama to be president, uh-huh. but partially because she would never do it. Like she's too smart you like to the ever fact do that it. She doesn't want to do it. Yeah, that's actually what Barack said. She, he was like, she would never. Ever yeah, and that's why I want her to do yeah. it. Yeah, you're like, so you yeah. want it? You're like, be president. Please. I know, I know. Not that I like, you know, there aren't candidates I don't like. They're actually in the race, but like, yeah, I think she'd be awesome. But like, I if think she I'm, actually would run, then I would be like, oh, I don't know. Now I'm over you. I, I don't really. <laughs> I I gotta wait. Like, I don't feel very strongly or passionately as a side note to politics. I was watching all 23 of them. Oh my gosh. Yes, we're up to 23. There is so 23 of them were in Iowa. No, 19 of them were in Iowa for Pride. Um, okay. And then there was a couple that couldn't make it, including Biden. He was not there, although he's coming today or tomorrow on the same okay. day that Donald will be there. He had, he had more women he had to, like, touch the shoulders up. <laughs> Sometimes I go up to Mike, oh, and I, like, God. go behind him, and I touch his shoulders, and I, like, sniff his oh, neck. Poor and Biden. I'm like, it's, so, it's creepy as fuck. He's just... So it's a creepy he's fuck kind thing of to do. in that way, unfortunately. If, well, that's what I told him. I was like, I don't think he meant anything. He's just like the creepy old dude, like the guys, like the the guy who was my waiter, who kept calling me princess and sweetie and like touching. Oh. Yeah, there's something about me, like as a complete just dis- like sidetrack from this. Something about me as a person to men, they just love like men who I don't know. I think we've talked about this. Yes. They just love to and just I be like. I told you that this is just a thing as a woman. It's so like fucking men disgusting. are just men. We just all experience men being inappropriate. It's like, and I'm sure men have their things about women that women do that. Yeah, it, you know. but like stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, but also just stop. Right, right. Not to like, I'm not trying to no, no, diminish I, the women's experience. No, and the men have their experiences mm. too. But like, yeah. I feel like if a man told me like, "Hey, you did this and it made me feel really uncomfortable," I would be like, "Oh my god, I'm sorry." Like, I would actually feel bad. And take it to heart and, like, never do it again. Right. And Like, like they, hey, when you, like, roped at my balls, it really made me feel... But also, as another side note, do women often grope strange men's balls? Well, and actually, they'd probably be like, when you grope my balls, like, I actually really liked it. It turned me on. <laughs> I don't know if they would be, feel like... But violating them? Maybe they maybe would feel violated. Maybe that's belittling them. Right. Maybe and I'm sure there's some men out there that might. would probably feel violated, so I hear, right. I hear them, but... As a woman, yeah, but I women know aren't really going around groping balls. And I mean, if, but if not... I did, I would also feel bad <laughs> if you told me to stop. Like part, I would be part like, of the issue is is like men's like genitalia is not sexy to women. That's true. Right? I don't like Whereas it when anybody's opposite. Says, you yes. know? and I don't know what because I don't I don't know. Don't send anybody a dick pic. Like and I don't. Well, think... they they do that so they get naked pictures back. You know that, right? But, like, and, and I don't know that. That's, oh, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. But also, don't do that. Like, who? I would never, if I was dating somebody and they were like, here's my picture of my penis, send me a nude back. I would not be like, okay. I don't, th- those two things don't yeah. mean the same thing to That me. reminds me of, do you watch Insecure? Yes and no. I've only seen, like, the first full season. Oh. oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So, you've seen it. Yes, okay. I've seen all the seasons. So then you can tell me where I left off. When she and the boyfriend who she cheated on lived together and they officially just, like, completely broke up and he, like, disappeared, I stopped watching it. I think that was the first season. Okay. So in the second season, she's dating. Is she dating the music producer? Um, not really. She, this is an online dating. Like, I don't want to give too much away. Okay, so maybe I'll I, watch it. Yes and no, I guess is the best way I Because I know she was, I like, sleeping it. with the music producer right. at a certain point. Right, right. And then, like... Didn't they live together? Did she move in with him? Because she was staying with him for a little bit. Yeah, And they maybe. were, like, sleeping in the I don't, same... I feel like I don't want to tell you what happens. But, like, no, I remember them, like, sleeping in the same bed together. Oh, so then you did see some like, of Like, I've the seen some season. of it, okay. yeah. And, like, they were sleeping... And then Molly gets, like, a new job. Like, I've seen right, some of right, this stuff. Right. Like, some of it yeah. I'm familiar with. Gotcha. But I think at a certain point, I just stopped watching it because I just... It became... Like, it was really final that her and this guy were not getting back together. Oh, and then you were really bummed? It I really mean, he's still in the show. Is he? Okay, yeah, I'll watch he's it. he's still in the show. Because I think he's so he's, cute. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah. And so is the other guy. Everybody, all the guys are well, cute. Well, okay, so the guy who's her her music producer, uh-huh. he's in something else that I've been watching. Daniel, right? Yes. Daniel, yeah. I don't know what he's in. Oh. Uh, 
But well, anyways, what I was going to say was, is I think it's the second season, and she's dating, and she's driving, looking at her online dating um, profile, which I have never done before. I've never, ever <laughs> done that. Um, and she, like, gets a message from a guy that's a dick pic, and she's looking at it, and she gets in a car accident. Of course. She, like, rear-ends somebody. <laughs> And she just like looks at it. It's just like the funniest thing because it's also like what I love about that show is it's so real. Yeah, too. Like, like, said- like something that would like happen in real life to somebody. Um, but yeah, so like I no, I totally hear you about that. Like, it's I don't just, like that. Don't send people dick pics. Yeah, they're like not pretty. There's <laughs> nobody's penis who's like pretty enough to send in a photo. I just don't think so. If you've yeah. seen one that you would like to see in photos, that's okay. You don't have to say it. But no, I just... I don't know. I don't, I don't think that I find them, like, really attractive. They're more like a... You, it's like a hammer. Like, I don't find a hammer attractive, I but, use, like... I need them. But, yeah, but I they're like useful. To have one. I, they're useful to have in the house. Right. But I don't need to look at it. Right. Like, I just, like, know that I need to have a hammer. I don't know. I just feel like they should probably stop doing that. I don't think anybody wants to see their penis pics. Well, again, they're not doing it because they... I know, but, like, girl, then women should stop sending nudes back. Don't send a nude if a guy yeah. sends you well, a dick Well, I don't send any... I don't even like sending any pictures because of what people do to exactly. pictures. Exactly. No, I totally agree. And then also you don't know where it's going to end up. Right. right um, exactly. Revenge porn. So, like, that's what I always think about. Right, right. Yeah. Um, okay. Even though we should not blame... I just have to say this. Sure. We should not blame the woman no. for sending a nude pic that ends up somewhere else. No. Because that's Actually, a violation. That's a violation if, you know, because that's not what, that's not the intended No, it target. was supposed to go to Because I feel like a lot of with the, um, you know, a lot of, um, like, celebrities yeah. who their photos end up getting leaked, like, the comments are like, well, they should have never oh, done that. Like, I and feel so bad for them. That's so victim blaming. No, you should do whatever you want. I yeah. just don't, like, I just, at this point, don't trust, like... If I was single, I wouldn't trust a man. Right, enough. and it's sad. You yeah. should be able to trust But that's the people. same thing with anything. It's like, it wouldn't be, I don't think that I would be wrong if I wanted to go for a jog at night and not right. be sexually assaulted. Oh, yeah. But, like, yeah. The, I, but I'm afraid to. Right. And so, like, that's the thing is, it's like this thing where it's like. Right, we should be able to walk I around naked to. and not worry that anything's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, but, like, we, I think we're all just like, we don't trust that you right. can handle that. Like, and yeah. So. yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, let's get okay. to So we only have a few more minutes, so let's okay. talk about the questions. So okay. I don't have them. Can you pull them up on your phone? Oh, hold on. Actually, you know what? Maybe I can do it. I'm going to do see if I can do it. Hold on one second. Because I texted them to you. Yeah, otherwise I can get to it. All right, perfect. Are you ready for the questions? So we're going to answer. Oh, you got them? I did. I found them. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have three questions this week. Um, so let's start off with last night... Um, I went to a friend's house with three other friends to have a bonfire. So this sounds nice already. Later, <laughs> right, I love bonfires. Yeah. Uh, later in the night, we played cards. And after that, it was pretty late. So I decided to head out. I went through the front door, which is right in front of the living room where everyone was hanging out. Standing in front of the door, out of my friend's view, I saw a cool moth at the light and started taking photos of it oh that, that's nice mm-hmm. I, you maybe were high but maybe <laughs> not I don't know after about two minutes I decided to leave but before I left I heard one of them say my name so this person's talking about their friend because they assumed I was gone they left the windows open by the way standing at the front door I listened for 10 minutes straight of them just tearing me apart stuff like of course you hate him and why is he so annoying came up it was pretty hurtful and I felt like shit Assuming they'd hear me open the fence gate and know I was there the whole time, I walked in and pretended to retrieve my bathing suit. They said nothing and assumed I didn't hear anything. I left and felt bad the whole night in my bed. What do I do? Only a couple of them said hurtful things. Mm. So, oh, I probably would have just said something right there. I'm pretty confronting, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have just said something or either A, said something right then and there, like, as I came back in the room, or B like probably just never talk to them again Mm -hmm. but I'm really dramatic so it's probably not good advice (laughs) we talked about this because I would not like we talked about this beforehand that I have learned to let things sit yes although in that situation I don't think at whatever age I was I would have felt strong to say anything yeah strong enough to confront I would have been probably shaking all over so yeah like my heart racing and everything I think this is this is a hard one because I think it really depends so 
um, that's helpful to know, like, it was only a few friends. Yeah, not the whole group. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that, you know, you maybe need to assess each one of those friendships and what was said and what you think. And, I mean, also, I would take some time and just, like, let it sit for a bit and marinate and then see how I feel after a few days. Yeah. Um, I think also, yeah, I don't know. Now I'm thinking about this because I was thinking, well, you could talk to the other people who, like, didn't, didn't say, say something, but then it turns into, like, a gossipy thing. Yeah. If you're like, well, don't tell these other people. So you right. probably need to um, deal with the people directly that said what they said. Also, if you give it some time, they might actually come to you and say, like, hey, I'm I'm feeling really weird about the other night, and, like, I don't, I was kind of wondering if you stayed in her, I, probably not. They'll probably yeah. wait for you to say something, but they might come to you so you could see if that happens. Um, but I think it really is dependent dependent on how hurtful of things they said and how important the friendship is to you. Yeah. I think that I would probably, since you already left, I would probably, I don't know, I think that you should, if I hear people talking shit about me, I just assume that you don't like me and we're not friends. So I probably would just be willing to cut them out, the people who were actually talking shit completely out of my life. Now, the problem is, it's like a friend group, it sounds like. Yes. And yeah. so also, the problem is that, like, I'm also really dramatic, again. Like, there's, like, a meme that I posted on my Instagram. I don't think that's true. That, like, I think that I can be. Like, I'm pretty all or nothing. Like, I, what I'm about okay. to say is that I think that, like, the fact that they were sitting there listening to them talk shit about oh, me. Oh, they're, like, they're, I would, it's, a, like, a conspiracy. Like, they're I, a part of it. I, I kind of feel like you're a part of it. Yeah. Like, I would be, like, you didn't stand up for me. Even if yeah, it was, like, guys, true. like, when I don't want to. say anything, then you're silence. basically compliant. Yeah, like, yeah. I think even if you would just say, like, guys, I don't want to fucking talk about Jamie. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fucking do this. Like, I would just feel better about the situation if that were to have happened. But again, like, you yeah, think to yourself. that's true. I didn't think about that. But then also, like, how, I don't know how old these people are. So, like, maybe you're really young and that's right. not, like, a thing and that you feel comfortable like, doing. Involved, right, at bonfires. So like, I'm going to assume there was you know, weed and drinking. Of, yeah, right. So. <laughs> but, like, you could definitely talk to the people who didn't say anything and say, hey, that was, like, I heard this and that was really hurtful. I mean, not that it's a good thing to do, but I I have done that before where I've brought it up to the person who didn't say anything. The witness, yeah. And they actually said, like, yeah, I felt bad, but, like, so-and-so always talks shit about everyone. Or, like, maybe they said something else mm. about it. So, like, I don't know. I would probably just selectively stop talking to the people who did say something. But I think you should cut them out of, like, you, you should try to remove yourself from a toxic situation if you can. Because they're not really your friends if they were waiting for you to leave to talk shit about you. And, like, super quickly, too. It was, like, the minute you walked out the door, they were, like, great, let's talk shit about him now. It was, like, instant. Yeah. I mean, I also think sometimes that does happen. But yeah. for a whole conversation between multiple people. For ten I, minutes, he says. Yeah, ten minutes. That is, that is, that, that does feel, I'm sure, and I'm sure the ten minutes felt way longer. Oh, yeah, I felt like you were standing the there for, like, 20 minutes right. listening to them right. and, and rip so, you like, apart. And so, like, it might be interesting to put some distance there and just, like, see how that feels and what happens and actually what you may find is that like these weren't healthy relationships mm -hmm. anyways and this was a good time to make this decision to have distance I agree okay so the next question I've been friends with this person for 13 years we've traveled together gone through some family stuff and are were very close I'm living in Texas she's living in New York City we are in our late 30s so this is like right in my wheelhouse I get where they're coming <laughs> from um, about six years ago, she started dating a guy. He was about a decade younger. I was supportive then, and in the first couple of years, grit my teeth and hung in there while she dealt with all the things you deal with when dating someone in his early 20s who still lives at home. The problem with this guy... Uh, the problems with this guy got bigger while both raised in America, both my friend and him are from and still surrounded by deeply conservative cultures from the Indian subcontinent. We found out he had been promised to a girl early in life. He gave um, most of his salary to his parents, etc. So now on top of maturity issues, I'm trying to empathize as my friend falls in love with a man who won't break off his parents' promise to marry his cousin back home and eventually allows them to get in, him to get engaged to her. A few, years, a few years ago, I started telling my friend she needed to break it off with this guy. It's clear he's not breaking up with his girl and his family, and his parents will still own his finances, but... I still stick by her as she stays on this never-ending roller coaster with him. Mm -hmm. I try to help boost her self-esteem, visualize dating someone better, etc., but still she stays. 
Finally, I told her I cannot do this anymore. I cannot continue to find empathy for her in this relationship. I'm at the end of my empathy on this. Is it fair for me to just give up on this? I'm sick of it. It's the same cycle she repeats over and over with this boy. And I give her the same shoulder pats and advice, help, etc. over and over again. So that was her question. So basically, her friend's in a toxic relationship. Right. She's tired of giving her advice about it. Right. And she's wondering, is it fair for her to give up on this? Now, I don't know if that means, like, she's not going to be friends. Or, or she just, yeah. like, don't talk to me about the situation. Yeah. I mean, I guess I might um, suggest talking to her about all your feelings. And I'm kind of curious, like, has she wanted your advice? Right. Because it sounds like she yeah. already know, like, she knows. Like, she has has an idea of what she wants to do and it's also I think sometimes um you know people know that it's not healthy but they're not ready to leave the situation right so I always try to talk about like okay so you're somewhere along that journey but you're not there and can you have self-compassion for that because what's the point in judging yourself and beating yourself up um you know you're not at the place where you were before where you wanted to stay in the relationship so you're going to get there where you're going to end the relationship eventually but you're just not there yet so um so maybe that's where she's at i don't know but it might be interesting to just share and even ask like when you talk about this relationship what are you looking for from me because if it is just empathy and not the advice, maybe that's possible. Right. But maybe you're at a place where you couldn't even do that. Yeah. And then I think just to say, like, you know, I'm really sorry, but I I just feel like at this point that I'm not going to be really helpful. I, I don't think there's anything that I can offer you. I don't feel like I can empathize right now. Um, and I'm sorry about that, but, like, I think it's better for us to just not talk about it. And yeah. maybe in the future that will change. Right. But for um, now, I'm just... Right, because, it, and to say, like, because I just don't know how to not be judgmental, you know, and I'm guessing you don't want that. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a hard, it's a hard one. Yeah, I would just, I, I don't think I would ever stop being friends with my, like, really close friend. And we don't even live in the same town. Like, personally, I'm just like, yeah, I, I mean, would just this avoid might be talking. All that she talks about. Though. Yeah, it could be like. So that's why life. I think she should tell her like what you just said. Like, yeah. listen, and then let her be ship like the. The, the captain of the ship. Right, of the make con- the decision. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. if you can't stop talking to me about this, then I'm going to limit how much I talk to you. But if you, if I say this to you and you're like, listen, Iris, I get it, like, let's talk about other things or whatever, then great, let's do that. But I think it's fair for you to be honest with her about how you feel and, like, maybe not wanting to talk about the situation anymore because maybe you're getting yourself really involved and so it sounds like it's starting to take a toll on how you um, feel about her. Right. Um, which, I mean, at the end of the day, like, that friendship, you're, you'll are you probably be there long after he is, so he'll, it'll probably figure itself out. Um, and if your friendship means that much to you, then it's worth it to have the conversation with her and just let her figure her own shit out, unfortunately. I wouldn't want to deal with it right. either. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think that situation is hard because, you know, when you're when you have someone that you care about who's con- you feel like is suffering yeah. and continuously Ooh. and they're not really being accountable for the fact that like, hey, I don't have to be suffering or I right. don't have to make this choice. Um, when you're outside, it's really hard to understand what's happening inside and of how stuck you might feel in yeah. making a choice to leave, right? So. Oh, that's true. That's true. Because, I mean, I feel like she's this friend is probably in, like, a toxic relationship. Yeah, yeah. And Maybe. those are so much easier to get out of when you're on the outside looking. Yeah, in, like, for us to just be like, get over it, stop yeah. it, move yeah. on. exactly. So I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay, so we have one more question, and I will read the question, and then we can go into answering it. So That's usually how questions and answers work. Are you sure? Because sometimes <laughs> I just, like, keep, I don't even give people a chance to answer the question. Okay, so let's jump into the last question that we have, um, and this one has the best title. Uh, it is called Accidental Hookup with Best Friend. So... <laughs> I've been best friends with one of my guy friends for almost 10 years. So that's why I thought of this one for you, because I know you've been looking to make some guy friends. So this will be, yeah. for, you can think about it. This um, is probably why it hasn't happened. I, I feel like this is why it hasn't happened. I only have like one guy friend and he is not interested in me at all. So, um, 
I have been best friends with one of my guy friends for almost 10 years. We're pretty close, male, female, both 28. And during our friendship, we have never done anything sexual. The other night we hung out and we both got drunk and ended up hooking up. We had sex, but it didn't last long because I had him use a condom and apparently he has issues using condoms. I had no idea. So it wasn't just sex, but a lot of kids. It was pretty awkward the next morning and I left. He texted me days later, hey, we should hook up. And I'm like, hang out. And he was like, no, hook up. Needless to say, I think this incident has ruined our friendship and I'm not really sure what to do. Um, I don't have any intentions of being with him or getting into not just not sure what to happen to our friendship now any advice would be great i think i don't know actually i really don't know what she should do yeah i actually well, have no idea i have no suggestions once you sleep with someone i mean i have lots of questions like what is his deal with condoms like you know those types of yeah, questions but like I nothing in particular like, about like what she should do yeah i feel like uh issues with condoms unfortunately this is kind of jaded but it's I think it's kind of an excuse, but I'm sure there are legitimate, uh, there are legitimate issues. But um, my thought is, um, because it sounds like this, you really want to keep the friendship or this person who's writing really does want to try to keep the friendship that they, that she values the friendship. So my suggestion would be that you would invite him to a public place yes, um, to try and talk about this because obviously you don't want it to be just the two of you um, because he has now the wrong impression that this is going to continue to happen. Right. And remember, like, we actually talked about this Iris already. Like, you had said, like, why would you want to have sex again if it was not great the first time? And, right. like, there's this thing about proving yourself sexually. Oh, that's true. I think he could be maybe trying to do that. Um, so, or maybe that's why. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Maybe he's um, like, oh, I don't want to have this lasting impression that I'm bad at sex. Right. With, or with maybe somebody. he just wants, he, you know, I think the thing is, is that the first time you have sex with someone is usually not the best time. Usually right. it's the most awkward not so fun time so you know maybe he's thinking that and that she's she knows that as well who knows but yeah so I would invite him to a public place to try to talk about this and just share really how you feel you know just that um look what happened happened um but I've really thought a lot about this and I think moving forward I I just want to be friends and is that possible and I understand if it's not like we you know, this line was crossed and I don't know if it can be uncrossed. I think also time may make a difference. Like if he's not, if that's not possible to have that conversation or if he's not okay with that, you know, letting some time go by, maybe when he's in a relationship oh, that's um, good. or, or maybe he's not, but maybe with time passing, um, I always think like giving time is really helpful because um, usually our first reaction is the strongest reaction and then it's might change over time. If we have the same strong reaction over time, then I think that also says something right. But it, it's always good to like, give it a little time, at least a little time to marinate and sit and really then decide what you want to do. Because I think then we can really connect to ourselves. Otherwise in the moment, we just kind of go based impulsively on whatever that initial strong reaction is. So, um, yeah, that's, I think that's my best thought. It is a really, it's a difficult situation. I know. And I just think to myself, like, could I be friends with somebody who I had sex with again? Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's so, I don't know. I feel I like think it depends on the situation and the people involved. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, for example, are friends with exes. I, oh. I don't, I think it's unusual that that can actually happen and be healthy is my thought. Um, but I think it, again, it depends on the individuals and where they're at. So, um, I don't think any it's, it's, I, I, I don't think always and nevers are a good idea. So I like that. I don't think always and nevers are a good idea. That's, that's so true because you just, honestly, you just never know. Right. Right. Yeah. So, well, thank you. That was good advice. I feel like you gave the best advice out of everybody who's been oh. on the show so far. Because I think because you're so practiced at it. Most of us are just like, oh, I think you should just say fuck that person. And you're like, well, listen, let's take a step back. What should you do? And I'm like, that's so nice. It's so good to have your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I'm always in the interest of trying to communicate with people. Now, do I always do that in my personal life? Mm, 
I mean, you know, the other thing that this person could do is just text it back, right? Like when he says, um, you know, no, hook up, you know, she can just say, you know, I am actually not interested in that. But if you ever want to hang out, I would be interested in that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it could be just that simple. I like that. I think that's nice that it doesn't have to be overcomplicated because I think I'm always thinking like, oh my God, I have to have a whole conversation with somebody and maybe like, maybe I could, but maybe I don't have to. Right. And she could say like, if you want to talk more about this, we can talk more about it. But yeah, I mean, like for the guy that might work better than having like a serious conversation where they meet in public and like, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think sometimes like, if we don't make it a big deal, then it doesn't actually have to be a big deal. So, yeah. Do you think and that I you mean, will... what? I was going to say, do you think he'll feel shut down by her, like, not wanting to hook up? And do you think that that could affect the friendship? Like, his ego that she's just not interested? Possibly. I mean, she could always say, like, it's not that I'm not, like, it's, it's not that I don't like having sex, but I really value our friendship. And that means more to me than sex. Right. Um, I mean, also, yeah, no, I think that's all I want to say about that. Never mind. I don't have an also. (laughs) Also, I I mean, my also is that I would hope that, you know, they've been friends long enough that hopefully it would mean more to him too. We would hope, right? Because it's been 10 years. Right. And again, like his initial response may not be positive, but like I'm saying with time, maybe that would change. I feel like we always well I think sometimes we in the moment just think like oh this is you know we do the black and white thing but as time goes on things get more gray yeah I like the gray area better than the black and white area too well I tell you that's really awesome because a lot of people struggle with gray it's a really scary place to be (laughs) oh I I agree with you also in that, like, my initial reaction is usually black or white. And then when I really have time, then I'm like, yeah, then you're right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, this could be better. Um, But I I think the other thing is, though, when you're interacting with people, I think you're right. Most people like just yes or no, black or white. And so then when you come back later with the gray, oftentimes maybe that person isn't there or, like, the relationship isn't there anymore. And so now, you know, but that could be for the best because it's sometimes better to only or try to your best to work with other people who live their life in the gray too right absolutely yeah well it was really hanging out with you today and talking to you today and meeting Maya today that was just <laughs> I had a day it was really wonderful yeah you as well same thanks uh, so much so- for having me yeah. on gosh thanks for coming you're yeah. like so excited. this was a great little um break from all the crazy not that everybody oh. else but I feel like you're just like so introspective and like, well, maybe you should talk about it. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm always in the interest of as many options as possible. We de- we definitely limit our options, I would say, um, as humans. So considering all the options is good. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh-huh. I will let you go. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about your fun life? You have a really cute dog. <laughs> Um, no, I think that's it. Oh, you're like, no, I'm a therapist and I have a cute dog. Yeah. And I mean, I don't any- know. We talked about, I guess, um, like you could edit, well, you could edit this to the beginning or something. Is that what you were thinking? I, I can if you want, oh, I- or I can just leave it because, you know, podcasts happen. Sometimes I leave mistakes. Right. Podcasts just happen sometimes. They're not sometimes. planned. They just, they just sometimes happen just randomly. Happen. Um, Well, I think the one thing I can add, I guess, about friendship specifically, we were talking about this earlier before we started recording, um, but just like that, um, I, you know, when I was younger, I definitely found relationships really challenging. I think I was really sensitive Mm -hmm. Um, and I could be kind of desperate, honestly, to make, have friends and be wanted. And I think when you're desperate, unfortunately, it's like unattractive. (laughs) And so I think that was honestly some of my struggle was that I wanted it so badly that I kind of pushed it away in some ways, I guess. Yeah. And then also like just being sensitive, I probably misread cues and things. Um, But I would say like maybe within the last like six, seven years, I've really done a lot of growth and I'm feeling like such in a better place with relationships and friendships specifically. And so it's interesting how, 
a lot of my really good, strong relationships are from that time or, or yeah. like sooner in my life, like not as much. Um, and in my younger years, although I definitely have some great friends from my younger years too, but I would say like my closest, strongest relationships are probably from like age 29 on, which is, I don't know if that's different, but I think it's cool. Like, I think it's great um, to be able to keep making connections and relationships throughout your life. And it's hard to do, honestly, once you're out of college. Yeah. So I think it took me a while to like figure out how to do that. And obviously Bumble BFF. <laughs> so Bumble BFF helps and all of the, you know, and all the others too. I have some good friends from Bumble BFF. I have some good friends from Craigslist and from Girlfriend Social too. So I think it just, I think I thank God for those little helping hands that yeah. connect because it's hard when we all work. And then honestly, with your career and with mine, right. I mean, you're a therapist. I can't be friends really with people at work. So. Right. And you're so isolated. Like you're the only one that's really doing your job. Now, right. now I just need to find like an app or a website to meet people to travel with. Cause I feel, I love to travel and I do like solo traveling. Um, but I would love to have like other people to travel with too. Cause sometimes I feel it like can I, get expensive to travel on your own, you know? So I travel with you. I love to travel too. I feel like you just met me at a time where I'm poor, but like you, if you ever meet my mother, she will tell you, she's always like, I've always been looking for friends. She, her number one wish for me has always been, I wish that you would make friends that you could travel with because oh I would always gosh, be. That's funny. All right. Well, yeah. we're going to have to well, meet you on four then. We'll figure it out. Her, yeah. We're going to, we'll go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> We should just make it a thing. Like, I always watch those Real Housewives shows, and they, all the girls do, like, a yearly trip. And I've always been like, man, I would love to have yeah. my girlfriend. That's, you yearly. know what? That's what we need to do. We need to have our own show, and then they will sponsor us to travel somewhere. Oh, that's cool. what we need Girl, to do. If, they would spon- if someone would just pay for me to travel, I'd never be here. I'd go someplace. <laughs> if you want me to go. Well, you know, have- always, traveling, you though, always traveling, though, it gets a little bit too much and it gets lonely. So I don't know that I always want to travel, but if I could travel every like couple of months, that's good. That I'd be. Okay, fine. I'll compromise. We can go someplace every three months. Okay. Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> we'll go to places for serial killers because I think that's something we have in common. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds Famous good. Famous serial killer spots and investigate the tragedies <laughs> that occurred and report back. Yes. And we could Honestly, make our own podcast. Yeah. Girls be tracking good, serial yeah. killers or something. A better title than that. TPA. Yeah, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, it was talking to you. <laughs> I- yes, it was good talking to you too, Iris. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>